For a system to reign supreme, it must dominate its intended targets in all areas of people activity. Cultures that successfully dominate other cultures do so due to the presence of a strong code of conduct adhered to by the individuals of the dominant group. A code of conduct, or simply put, a code, is what is necessary for the domination of any group. A dominant culture may use deceit, direct violence, and or the threat of direct or indirect violence in order to maintain their supremacy. When a dominated people are treated unjustly or unfairly, that is due to the fact that they are being deprived of and or denied access to something of value to which they are entitled. When people are deprived of and denied access to something of value to which they are entitled, it is correct for them to request that for which they are entitled. When people ask for that which they are entitled and they are refused, they are then entitled to compensation. When people ask for compensation and they are refused that compensation, they must then acquire the compensation for themselves through their own efforts. When people seek to acquire compensation for themselves through their own efforts, they must establish a compensatory system to use as a basic guide for thought, speech, and action. When people form and function through a compensatory system, they should base that system on some form of compensatory code of conduct or a code, which is especially designed to help serve the needs of the people in acquiring what is rightfully theirs. With the initial scramble for Africa, many Africans and African nations were caught off guard, unaware, and off code. Thus, they lost their sovereignty to a culture with a unified code of conduct centered around the domination and subjugation of the African continent. I'm your host, Ebube Okoli. Welcome to Up Close and Center. On this episode of Up Close and Center, we will explore what analysts have described as a new scramble for Africa and what African nations can do to prevent loss of sovereignty. As always, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell notification icon so that you will be among the first to know every time new content becomes available. Furthermore, if you have any additional analysis on the topic, please feel free to use the comment section. Africa is the planet's second largest continent and is home to immense culture and history. Africa's current borders were largely decided by European powers during the late 19th and early 20th century in what was known as the Scramble for Africa. In the 15th century, the Portuguese began expeditions to the west coast of Africa. Contact was first established with ancient Congo. Ancient Congo's elites allowed the Portuguese as well as their Catholic missionaries to live among their people. Soon after the arrival of the Portuguese, guns and advanced weaponry also began to arrive. Although brought in by the Portuguese, these guns ended up primarily being used by Africans against other Africans to the benefit of the new arrivals. Very soon, most of ancient Congo was engulfed in a series of wars involving these very same weapons. Thus, these wars created captives and refugees, which then created a ready group of people to be sent into slavery by the very same Portuguese. By the 17th century, additional European powers began to settle off the coasts of Africa. Between the 16th and 18th century, an estimated 12.9 million Africans were stripped of their dignity and freedom under similar circumstances. Europeans moved from the coastal regions and pushed into the interior of Africa. However, now they were in search of raw materials. These raw materials were vital for the European economy to function. Due to Africa's necessity to Europe, the Europeans took steps to create a code of conduct between themselves, where they would avoid fighting each other and instead would make the African their collective enemy and subjugating the African continent their collective goal. All thought, speech, and actions would then be taken towards accomplishing this goal, even if they disagreed on the means of obtaining their objective. In the late 1800s, the notorious Berlin Conference was called by German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck. The conference included 13 European powers and the United States. Unsurprisingly, 
no African nations were invited to this conference. The goal of the conference was to inculcate a code of conduct among the European nations and define how they would collectively deal with the Africans, who were unaware that the Europeans had gotten on code with each other while the Africans were still fractionalized, divided, and off code. Europe also held the technological advantage in regards to the manufacture of war machines. A few hundred men equipped with the world's most lethal technologies could proceed to overwhelm and obliterate thousands of well-trained, disciplined Africans, especially since most African nations lived without scarcity and had very little need to develop a war culture as they lived in relative abundance. The machine gun was the tool of choice in paving the way for colonization. However, it was just a tool. The main weapon was a code of conduct. In their quest to carve up the continent, the Europeans were largely successful, but would face pockets of resistance. For example, the Igbo of Nigeria actively fought the British invasion of eastern Nigeria from 1883 until 1929, a total of 46 years of active resistance. Similarly, by the early 1880s, Abyssinia, or modern-day Ethiopia, used the geopolitics of the day in order to stay free. As such, the Abyssinian emperor made a decision to exploit the European rivalries in order to obtain the same modern weaponry, which made the Europeans so successful. As a result, Abyssinia remained independent. However, by 1914, 92% of the African landmass had been divided between seven European countries, with only Ethiopia and Liberia remaining independent nations. With almost 20% of the world's population, 10% of the global oil output, 93% of the world's platinum, 82% of the world's coltan, 92% of the world's cobalt, 51% of the world's known gold supply, 68% of the world's manganese, 38% of the world's uranium, and 54 total votes in the United Nations. Africa is just as economically attractive today as it was 500 years ago. Centuries after the original scramble, Africa remains the wealth generation engine for the rest of the world. Moreover, some analysts are stating that a new scramble is presently occurring and this one is not very different from the original scramble. Today, the scramble is said to be between China, the United States, Canada, Japan, Turkey, India, and the European Union. The European Union wants continued and steady access to the African market of over 1.3 billion people. Africa has an infrastructure deficit that China is looking to fill, either directly or indirectly, by funding such projects. Recently, China built its first overseas military base in Djibouti. At least 10,000 Chinese firms operate in Africa, and one-third of China's investments are in the African mining sector. However, China is not the only top player in the African continent, as the United States is still reportedly Africa's largest investor. There are over 500 American companies operating in South Africa alone. The country officially has over 6,000 troops deployed on the continent spread across at least 13 nations. Some have alleged that Africa is now the new front to take on China's rising influence, and that Washington is now battling for power and influence, as Africa is now the continent of the future. In the previous generation, Africa was colonized by trickery and military force. In this generation, Africa is being trapped by loans, land grabs, and short-sighted leaders selling their nation's future at a discount. In order for Africa to avoid being the victim of another scramble, African youth and Africa as a whole need to learn from the original scramble and inculcate a code of conduct focusing on African empowerment for the 21st century. This concludes our broadcast of Up Close and Center. As always, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell icon so that you will be among the first to know when new content becomes available. Furthermore, if you have any additional analysis on this topic, please feel free to use the comment section.